Currently, children always want things to be done by their way, and they don't get the opportunity to play like we used to play. We used to socially interact with people, which is healthy for us. They, the, only, the only thing that they do these days is screens, YouTube, uh, TV, uh, games, uh, just everything concerning screens. So they don't get a chance to interact with people. They don't get a time to, to chat with people, to learn some of, um, some of these things that will help them to socialize well and help their emotional intelligence and also help them to relate and socialize well. It's, and even learning the academics too. So <clears throat> I think there's a, there's a, there's a challenge there. When you, balance, when you talk about learning, balance, yeah. when you talk about learning, um, some parents give their children screens to learn yeah. because they are new apps, they are new technology. Kids yeah. are learning coding yeah. before they can even speak. Yeah, like so, the people are pushing these things because they also want their kids to because they feel they also want their kids to have a certain advantage at a certain age that they didn't have. Yeah. Uh, how how do we um, marry the two when you know you say screens are making them less and less yeah. emotionally intelligent and they want their way, but their parents are also using these screens to help them learn. It's not all the screens that they can even watch these videos from. Some yeah. of the screens are purposely built. That's true. To challenge them, how how do we? Um... So I, I think the word here is <clears throat> the word here is balancing. You have okay. to help the child to be balanced. You have to help the child to understand that um, there's some time you have to concentrate on some on screens and maybe your work and learn and all that. And there are some times that you shouldn't always be on it, but you, you have to play. You have to interact with people. You have to play with your family. You have to chat with your family. You have to know, uh, learn about them, their strengths and their weaknesses and how you should relate with them. But um, we currently have children who mostly concentrate on their screens and get more addicted to it and it tends to affect their their learning we want them to learn and of course screens help us to learn um, if um, i'm giving uh, I, I learn something in school and i come back home and i go to youtube and then watch one or two videos on it it sticks better it helps me to process my uh, my learning from my working memory into my long-term memory and it sticks better and retrieval is easier but if you concentrate all the time on screen, all the time, every day without conversing or socializing with people, yes, you lose some, you will lose um, skills and your emotional intelligence and all that with people. Yeah. You mentioned this um, memory memory thing. What 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 what's, what's that? Okay, so we do have um, three types of memories. We do have the sensory memory, we do have the working memory, and we do have the long term memory. Now, the sensory memory is every information that comes to our senses, whether from our sight, whether from our hearing, or our taste, or smell, or our touch, any of them. Uh, when the information is moving, it moves to the working memory next, which that one takes about 20, 20 seconds, I think so, 20 seconds, to get um, information into your long-term memory. So here, when you rehearse the information, when you attach emotions to that emo information, you will be able to commit it into your long-term memory, and retrieval is easier. And that is what screen help us to to uh, to help. I think helps us in our learning. Yeah. So when you add screens to it, when you watch something, it helps us to commit it into our uh, into our memory. Is it is okay. it when it you people say that people are audiovisual learners? Yeah, audiovisual learners, of course. That um, uh, the multiple intelligence learning. So that's part of audiovisual learners. Now you should also know that here, if the child is watching something that is not related to learning the child is also committing that same information to a long-term memory. Right. So imagine if the child is watching um, uh, two violent videos, uh, videos that are uncaring, it, he, he or she tends to carry this information um, visually or maybe whatever into the mind. Okay. And that's what a child will portray. What, what you, you do more, what you learn more, what you watch more, it tends to become that. And children also do vicarious learning, that's observational learning. They observe you, and that's what they do. Yeah. And yes, and I, I if learned it, somewhere yeah. that I learned somewhere that um, children or babies or infants yeah. um, use eighty percent of their brain to watch things, just to look. Their, all their energy they are spending is just yes. looking. The twenty percent is just the rest of the body, but they're just looking. The whole time. Exactly. And that's what drains their energy. <laughs> yeah. Is it the thing they mentioned that um, uh, as a parent, you should, you should, you should um, practice what you preach? Because 
children tend to observe and learn and mimic so yeah. if if you tend to if you tend to say say it all the time do this do that uh, make sure that you uh, you do the right thing by you the parent you are not doing the right thing the children are learning that because they are observing that in the same way on tv what they observe and what they learn if you want them to uh, um, to be responsible citizens or responsible adults. Or to be if you kind give them, and yeah, polite. To be kind and be polite and be friendly and be emotionally intelligent, of course. They have to be uh, exposed to um, friendly things, child-friendly things that help them to go. Okay. 